Hey everyone, I'm Jessica Kramer with MRC TV. By now I'm sure you've heard about Lori Smith and her fight for right to conscience in the latest First Amendment Supreme Court case. Today we have attorney Jake Warner, senior counsel for Alliance Defending Freedom, who was in the courtroom on Monday for oral arguments to discuss what we've seen so far and his new case involving household name Jack Phillips. Attorney Warner, thank you for coming on with us. Thanks for having me on the show. First, can you explain the case for those who might be unfamiliar? Sure. Lori Smith is a graphic artist and website designer. She owns 303 Creative, which is located in Colorado. And she wants to start creating uh, custom websites celebrating God's design for marriage between a man and a woman. But her state, Colorado, has made it very clear that she's not welcome in that space. Colorado would force her to express and promote views of marriage that go against her deeply held beliefs. A few years ago, Lori looked around and she saw how cake artist Jack Phillips had been targeted by state, official, state officials and punished, prosecuted, all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court. And she wondered, what well, could my state do that to me? And the answer was, of course, yes. So instead of going through the uh, administrative purgatory and going through punishment like Jack Phillips, Lori decided to challenge this unjust law. Unfortunately, in two courts below, uh, the courts ruled that the state could force her to uh, promote messages that go against her deepest beliefs. But uh, earlier this year, the U.S. Supreme Court decided to hear Lori's case. And we were in court on Monday uh, where uh, ADF CEO and general counsel Kristen Wagner argued on behalf of Lori Smith. So what do you think the big takeaway was from what we heard on Monday? Is there a particular argument that you found most compelling or telling? One of the key moments in court on Monday was an exchange between Kristen and Justice Neil Gorsuch, who uh, asked Kristen directly, uh, in every decision that Lori is asked about, it's, it's always about the what. It's never about the who. Uh, people like Lori Smith and Jack Phillips, they serve everyone. They just can't express every message through their custom art. And the, from the questions that were uh, released on, on or that were given on Monday, it seemed very clear that the majority of the court really understood that this case was about government trying to force Americans to say things that they don't believe. People who serve everyone but just can't express every message. And that's why we're hopeful that uh, by the end of next June, the Supreme Court is going to uphold the right of every American to say what they believe without fear of government punishment and issue a win in favor of Lori Smith. Well, there was one exchange that I caught. It seems Justice Gorsuch had to defend that a person's religious beliefs cannot change in his exchange with the opposition. Do you think that the concept of objective, unchanging truth is what is most threatening to the other side? I think what we've seen over the past 10 years are activists and government officials trying to punish those who simply disagree with them on some of life's biggest issues. And that's certainly seen in the case of Jack Phillips. Um, you know, he's uh, in his third lawsuit now. Um, uh, on the same day that the U.S. Supreme Court decided to hear Jack's case back in uh, 2017, a local Denver attorney called Jack and requested a custom blue and pink cake to celebrate a gender transition. But this wasn't the first time that attorney had contacted Jack. All the way back in 2012, the attorney emailed Jack, calling him a bigot and a hypocrite, and then really tracked Jack for years uh, before calling to request this custom blue and pink cake to celebrate a gender transition. And then two months later, the attorney called back requesting a custom cake depicting Satan smoking marijuana. So I think what's clear from this track record is that uh, activists and government officials are trying to punish people that they disagree with. And artists like Jack Phillips and Lori Smith are the ones who are most in danger. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask you, as the lead attorney of Jack Phillips's new case, Scardina versus Masterpiece, can you tell us where that case stands at the moment? That's right. Well, that case went to trial uh, last year, and a lower court uh, punished Jack, ruled that Colorado could force him to promote messages that go against his deepest beliefs. Alliance Defending Freedom appealed that case on behalf of Jack up to the Colorado Court of Appeals, and uh, we argued that case uh, a couple of months ago in, our, in October. Right now, we're waiting for a decision from the Colorado Court of Appeals, and we're hopeful that that court will see what's really at stake here. Can the government force artists to express messages that go against their deepest belief? And the First Amendment answers that question, no. 
And a win for people like Lori and Jack is is really a win for all Americans. That's that's because if the government can force Jack Phillips and Lori Smith to create custom art promoting views of marriage that go against their beliefs, the government could also force, for example, an LGBT website designer uh, to publish and create websites criticizing same-sex marriage. Or it could uh, force a Democrat poster creator uh, to create posters promoting the Republican Party platform. Uh, free speech is for everyone, not just for those who agree with the government. And that's what these cases are about. Well, it seems that the op the opposing counsel was trying to argue that if someone is hired, their work is no longer considered part of their speech. I found lead attorney Wagner's closing statement particularly strong, where she reiterates that, quote, third party perceptions cannot possibly matter in this case, or we wouldn't have any compelled speech doctrine cases, and the government would have unfettered authority to compel speech because we would all know that it was the government that was doing it. And quote. What did you make of their arguments? Well, you know, I, I think if you look at, for example, at a ghostwriter, you know, everyone understands that the government can't force a ghostwriter to write a book just because everyone thinks that someone else wrote it. That would be a gross violation of the First Amendment. And people like Lori and Jack, they're intimately involved in the creative process. Uh, the co court historically has not looked at whether third parties would think that uh, people like Jack and Lori affirm the message. You know, we protected uh, newspapers in the past who are publishing opinion pieces. Those opinion pieces are expressly ascribed to uh, other parties as the, as the author, but the First Amendment protects the newspaper's right not to publish them. So that's a well-settled constitutional principle. Uh, the First Amendment protects people like Lori and Jack who serve everyone but just can't express every message. Yeah. Well, and lastly, you know, with the new court, are you guys hopeful for how this case is going to turn out? We're very hopeful about how this case uh, will turn out. The majority of the court seem very concerned about the extent of Colorado's theory. Colorado would compel newspapers and, and publishers. Colorado would even force uh, Lori to create custom websites, for example, saying God uh, supports this marriage. Um, even Justice Kagan was, uh, appeared to be concerned by, by the extent of Colorado's theory. So I think a majority of the court really understood what was the key issue here. And that's the right of every American to say what they believe without fear of government punishment, no matter your views on life's biggest issues. Thank you so much, Attorney Warner, for coming on and speaking with us today. We appreciate your expertise and insight into what's going on. Thanks for having me on the show. It was a joy. Thank you.